Hello guys, today I'm proudly presenting you my new course on Teachable Platform, a pretty short course, but pretty important in my opinion, about Laravel collections chains. And I've been doing quite a lot of research about collections in general and how people use them, how developers use them, and I've gathered a lot of examples and I discovered and I realized that the best way to use collections, the most elegant and effective, is for chaining the methods. So if you have eloquent collection, or array turned into a collection, there are different methods to transform the data, like filter, map, and each, and then the sentence becomes really beautiful in terms of code and performs multiple operations. So I've gathered such examples, 15 examples to be precise, and I will show it quickly in that course, which is just 40 minutes long, so you could get through that quickly. And in this video on YouTube, I will show you three examples from that course, a simple one, two method chain, then three method chain, and then four method chain. And if you want the full course with the repository of the examples, which you can play around with all 15 examples, then purchase the course, which is actually cheaper than other courses because it's shorter. So other courses typically are $29. This one is 19 plus taxes if that applies to you. Or, of course, as I keep repeating, a better deal is to subscribe to yearly membership for $129 per year, which currently has already 34 courses bundled. Now, let's get into collection chains and three examples I've prepared for you. Let's start our course about Laravel collection chains from a very simple example with a chain of two methods. In all videos of this course, I will take some code from some open source repository sometimes modified by myself, sometimes not, and we will debug step-by-step step, trace the values so you would understand what are the values after each step of the collection chain. So let's start with the first one. The goal here is to show the permissions divided by a new line tag, and it is taken from day-by-day -day CRM open source project, which uses, as I understand, data tables, and to form the result of one data table column, they need to return the string and string from permissions relationship can be performed with collections. So this is the example code. I shortened that myself to use short syntax of the function because we need only the permission name. Let's take a look at the values. Initial value of the permissions, if we click and zoom it in and see items, those are permission objects, models from the database. And we are interested only in the name field, name column. So this is the initial value, the collection of permissions. Then we do map through those permissions, go back on top, this part. From each permission, we need only the name and we form a new collection with this value. Let's open it up and we have new collection with three items, only the names. And then if we want to form a string from that separated by BR, we use implode functionality. And this is our final result, which will be used in the data table to show permissions one by one with new line. So again, this is the overall collection chain from two methods, map and then implode. And with all those examples, by the way, they are working with seeded data with roles and permissions. So this is not hard coded. This is actually taken from the database. You can take the repository and play around yourself. The next example of three method collection chain is with repeating the same method twice. And this example will be interesting from a few perspectives. Let me show you why. First, the task itself. You have a list of models. You need to filter them out by some conditions. And then with each of them, you need to perform some kind of operation. And this example comes from a repository, Open Door Me. It saves a lot of GitHub repository details. And for repositories, it needs to refresh the details from time to time, but only for the repositories that have GitHub access token and with at least one member registered. Basically, if we have the repository data of the GitHub, we can update repository details. And I want to point out two things here. First, using collection methods instead of rejecting that from the database. There's a common performance topic that if you use the database to filter out the data, it would be much faster than you get all the data and then filter stuff out in the collection. And that is true, except 
when it is more readable to use that in the collection instead of doing pretty complicated SQL or eloquent query. And if you know that the data is pretty limited, so there could be like 100 repositories maybe. So if it's just 100 entries or even 1000 entries, the filtering in most cases wouldn't be that different in terms of performance if you compare eloquent to filtering with collections. And every case is individual, so the theory that the database is faster, but in practice, sometimes using collections is more readable in the code, especially if the conditions are quite complicated and rely on other coding features, like for example, repository owner, which uses polymorphic relations, may be a user or maybe the organization. And then depending on user or organization, the condition is different. And one of the conditions uses more relationships and functions from Laravel, not from database. So that's the reason why in this case, I think that collection is better than database or at least not worse. And also second thing I want to point out, why use reject twice? First, you can do reject or filter, 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 for example, reject, reject, reject. There's nothing wrong with that. And of course, we could use one reject and then return condition and condition. But that again would be more complicated to read. In this case, it's easier to read reject repository if the owner is user and user doesn't have a GitHub access token or reject if the repository owner is organization and members where is registered doesn't exist. So it reads in plain English language. If you put that into one reject function and add condition of or, it would be probably more complicated to read in one condition. Now let's trace the values. So initially, for example, for the repository, we have these models. So first repository owner type user and GitHub access token is null. Then second repository with owner type organization. And then third repository I've seeded is user type organization, but this time with members from what I remember. After the first reject, so rejecting the users without GitHub access token, we have filtered out the first repository because the first repository has a user without GitHub access token. So that is rejected by the first reject. So now I have second and third repository. And then another reject filters out the second repository because it doesn't have registered users. You don't see that clearly in this example because it doesn't show all the relations, but you can check that out in the database. If you want to trace it down, the repository link will be below the course video. And then with the final result of repositories, you perform each, then the value of repositories doesn't change. You just perform some action or operation, or in this case, dispatch a job. And now we get to the last part of this course is more complicated collection chains. So more than three methods, I group them into like four or more. And the first of those is unique filter map and values. What does it do? So we have a lot of events, for example, meaning server events, like something happened and every event has a message, a subject, and let me show you the structure. So event all is message, status, and subject. So success message, maybe another success message, maybe error with failure, and maybe unknown with no subject. And then we need to get the unique messages, filter the ones that don't have subject, and extract the data into another structure. And this example comes from Open Dialog project, which was already mentioned in this course. It has pretty complicated structure and I've simplified it for this example of collections, but it's pretty similar here. So we work with message and subject and we extract data and extract data is this. So we need to transform the data into another structure. And let's take a look exactly what that structure is. So after the first unique, the unique would filter the repeating ones. So this is the repeating. So success message and success, also success message and success, even with a different subject, but the condition of uniqueness is unique event message. So after that unique, we have three items in our collection, success, error, and random message. Then the next operator is filter, and we're filtering out the ones without the subject, which is, in our case, this one. Subject null, it shouldn't be in the final result, which leads us to two items in the collection, success message and error failure. 
then we map through those and as I've showed you extract data gives you a different structure of that data and the result of that is collection of two items like this. So that's probably the structure required by that software project. I'm not sure why, but this is outside of this course topic. Our goal is to chain the collection methods. So we have the map into another structure and then we need values. What does values do? As you can see, the keys of those items are zero and two. So not in sequence. When we filtered out the item with key three and key one, even earlier, this one, the keys stayed the same. So values would do the order of zero and one. So we get only the values and they are rearranged as a typical array wrapped into a collection.